you know, the role of the realtor obviously extends beyond just selling a house. It's it's more of a of a matchmaker to help ensure your client's success uh, into the community that they've moved into. Hello, welcome to episode 193 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by Latham Jenkins of Livewater Jackson Hole. As a top producing real estate professional selling one-of-a-kind properties such as a 233-acre, $35 million ranch, Latham sells much more than what's inside four walls. With a background in graphics design and photography, Latham focuses on showcasing the surrounding amenities and unique lifestyle offered with his listings. Throughout our conversation, Latham highlights the value of being a hyper-local expert, the importance of truly getting to know what makes a listing unique, and how involving sellers in the marketing of their property can help create a more captivating listing. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, the Smart Agents Magazine is available and full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you'll find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Be sure to click the link in the episode description to claim a free digital issue. Also, if you enjoy this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents Podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Latham Jenkins. Be sure to check his website out at livewaterjacksonhole.com. Really, the way I like to start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit, uh, who you are and a little bit about your real estate background. Uh, Michael, thanks for having me on the show. I'm Latham Jenkins and uh, I'm the residential director at Live Order Jackson Hole in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, uh, and specifically focus on lifestyle real estate. You know, when you when you buy property in an area like this, really what you're buying into is a lifestyle that you uh, desire to to have. And uh, I really see my role as as being a guide uh, to help people achieve that. Before we started recording, you said you moved to uh, the Jackson Hole area uh, roughly 30 years ago. And when did you get into real estate? Yeah, I, you know, I've always been in real estate professionally speaking. It's uh, I started out as a photographer and studying basically to get out of school graphic design. So I saw a way to to merge the two as the first color laser uh, office printer started coming out, and I started generating listing flyers for local luxury realtors. And it it, uh, really opened my eyes as to how to leverage uh, what I have a passion for, kind of visual media uh, and uh, and applying it to the real estate space. So um, yeah, I I basically have spent 30 years marketing real estate, but about eight years ago, I obtained my license and uh, have have thoroughly enjoyed engaging at this level. Right. Then tell me, you know, your, your specific market, uh, like you said, you know, people that are looking to buy there, they're really looking for a specific lifestyle. And I mean, I know for myself, that is an area where I could, you know, definitely see myself living. It is beautiful. I, uh, I definitely, I kind of went down the, uh, the Google rabbit hole a little while ago. It's, um, you know, when you look at our buyer profiles, First of all, Wyoming is very fortunate as, as we are the most tax friendly state, both from a business perspective and a personal income perspective. So, um, you know, we naturally attract tax refugees. You, you know, you might say, well, so does Florida and Texas. Uh, and, th- and that is true, but actually Wyoming is more tax friendly if you can endure the winters. Um, so that's, that's just a natural feeder layered, uh, layered on top of that. Sure. Are people that, want to live in an engaging community that offers all the lifestyle benefits that a place like Jackson Hole does. You know, I, I would argue, Michael, there are more things to do in Jackson Hole than anywhere else in the world. It's it's incredible when you look into people's garages as to the amount of gear that they obtain throughout, uh, you know, their, their time in Jackson Hole. And I actually, when buying a house, I mean, when and selling houses, I always laugh. So I'm like, watch, you're, you're going to fill this garage up. And they, they shake their head and I'm like, watch this. Um, but that, you know, and, and you know, we kind of like to say, and it's, it's not fair because Florida is a fabulous state, obviously, but we, 
you know, we make the argument, you're going to take 10 years off your life moving to Florida versus if you move to Jackson Hole. And, and just last week, the local paper published uh, the number of skiers that skied for 100 days or more. And it's incredible how many 70 and 80 year olds are on that list. You know, it's a place that just naturally makes you want to get out, exercise, and as a byproduct, you eat healthier. And um, so, yeah, after you've, you know, a, obtain business success and you're trying to figure out how to how to appreciate the years you have left and make the most of them living in a community like this it's so health conscious uh certainly you know certainly surrounds you with people that have good habits and naturally you hope to fall in line with them i'm really interested in you know, you talked about your photography experience and the graphic design and how that kind of you, you know your work with uh agents and company how did that transform uh you know, kind of move you into getting your license yourself. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I am. So from day one, I was taking photos of listings and, um, kind of realizing that there is a, a way to do it. That was, that was different in value added than just the standard roll up, take a picture and keep going. And, um, as I went forward, I, I still published two visitor guides. Well, two magazines in Jackson Hole. One's a visitor's guide. One's a architecture and, and interior design magazine. But I've always been in the media space, which naturally kind of drew me into the advertising space. And I, I you know, I've developed a, a, a great appreciation for storytelling. And that, um, you know, that is, that is mostly from a visual standpoint because the internet is obviously a visual medium. Uh, we know people don't read our listing copy that much, but you know, they engage in the visual assets that are presented. And if you take time to do that the right way, you know, uh, people see that thumbnail image of a listing come up and they're more drawn to want to click on it. Even if it's not something attainable, um, you know, there's a neat interest in us and, captivating visuals, um, you know, or, or, or compel people who want to click and learn more. And like a case in point, two of my listings, um, one has been a house of the year, uh, house of the year on the wall street journal. And, um, the other was recognized this year as the fourth most clicked on listing on mansion global. And it didn't even run to the end of November. So within about 25 days, uh, you know, it had gained that accolade of clicks. And it has everything to do with focusing on, you know, how do you create desire through the imagery? And, and I've spent my career focused on that, you know, and I, I, I share this with my colleagues, the need to do it. It's something that a lot of times they, they look to their photographers and, and other, um, you know, contractors to deliver for them. But I, I always like to remind them the most important role that you're playing, even if you're not visually talented with photography or videography is that of the producer. You have to own this and you have to spend time researching what makes it special. Um, like a case in point, I, I was making a listing pitch on a ski area property just last week and I was, you know, everything in Miami is under snow still. And here we are, what is it, uh, 18th of April. And I noticed on the GIS for the summer image, there was a fire pit in the backyard and the house was it's, it's a nice house, but it's not one of those houses you just stop and go, oh my gosh, I need that. So I was thinking to myself, well, what do I do to help this buyer realize that this is a place where family magic happens? That's why, you know, so many buy here because, you know, as you age through life and you have your adult children and your grandchildren start showing up, you're looking for places together. And Jackson Hole is definitely one of those to ha have these exciting memories. But, but, you know, when I noticed that fire pit, I was looking out in the backyard and it's buried under snow and I asked for permission to go out and dig it up. And so we did and, uh, and took a fabulous shot there, the family surrounding the fire pit, but the house and the, and the, you know, eating glow and I won the listing. So, um, you know, I spent a lot of time studying these properties because what I ultimately believe Michael is that as much as the industry celebrates, you know, what happens within the four walls and the roof and the house really that's a component you know we buy you know as they say location 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 but you buy into these neighborhoods subdivisions developments um because of the amenity base that you're surrounded by 
And if you don't celebrate that amenity base with the listing presentation, it's often overlooked. And so in places like Jackson Hole where buyers are not local, they don't even know those amenities exist unless you point them out. But, but I would even argue in you know other other locales, you need to do this because it's it's um it speaks to this emotional um, draw that people have and these visions of why they want to live in that neighborhood versus this neighborhood. But often we don't do that with our listing presentations. And uh, I'm always encouraging get out of that house and shoot photos. Um, right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I, re- I really love the idea of, you know, digging up that backyard. So you, you present the, the home and that backyard outside of the buried in snow, because I have to imagine it can be difficult, you know, for you to uh, present a, a listing in a, you know, throughout, you know, kind of show the different aspects of that lifestyle when you are in maybe one particular season. Oh, well, you know, winter time in particular with us and it's, um, you know, it's crazy. I, I spent a lot of time on snowmobiles, snowshoes, cross country skis, and you're trying to move around these properties and it's, it's difficult to hear. Here's a little side, side, side story. It's kind of interesting. So I get this call from, uh, Kim Kardashian's agent. She wants to come see this 36 acre property that I have. It's vacant. It's, it's Christmas. I'm like, how in the heck am I going to get around? And then I'm like, is Kanye coming? She's like, yes, Kanye's comes. I'm like, Oh my gosh, wow, these two are showing up. So I um I called the local sleigh ride company and they agreed to bring the the sled out. And I had this great vision that we're gonna tour them around the property in a horse drawn sleigh. Um security details shut that down. Um so um, you know, you're you're left in the winter time with a lot of challenges of how do I present property when you can't physically move around it that easily. Um, but you know, there's, there's some, there's some buyers that really love the thought of putting on snowshoes and, uh, you know, taking off across, you know, across the vacant lot to see where the building envelope is. Right. Absolutely. And I, I, you know, I don't totally agree with you. The fact that, you know, so many times I'm looking at listing photos and the only shot or anything that you get of the surrounding areas, maybe from, you know, the street looking back at the house. So you don't, you don't even see what you know, you're looking out from your back, you know, your back window, you might have this beautiful preserve behind you, but you never see it, you know, from the listing photos. Yes. Yes, it's true. And it's, um, you know, drones are very helpful of of gaining perspective of what's going on and, uh, do a lot of drone work, uh, to help show just proximity. And, you know, I think, I think even, you know, the, the motion graphics applied to videos now can do that very well. And educating a buyer very quickly as to, um, you know, the benefits if you buy this house, what's around you. Um, yeah. How important do you think it has been for your, you know, your real estate career to to understand those different, um, you know, things that are available to you with the photography and some of the technology that's out there? Yeah, you know, it's been. I, I sit in so many um, company meetings and what have you. Obviously, we see it in the industry of pushing realtors to further adopt the technology that's out there, the visual medium. And it, it, it's absolutely critical you, you understand it. Again, you play the role of the producer. You might not have the technical expertise to, to capture that, but um, you own the story. You know that listing better than anyone else other than the homeowner. And you've got to find a way to surround yourself with great talent that can execute on your vision because that vision correlates with how you list and show the property. It can't be disconnected. So in other words, if you hire it out completely and then you show up to show the property, you know, the story is not aligned and people are, are driven to go see these listings because of the visual medium. And it's, it's your job to pick right, right up on that story and uh, start sharing it. And the other thing that I like to do is I don't always show the properties in the middle of the day. There's very little emotion in the middle of the day. It's harsh, bright light. Try and get them there in the, you know, most people won't show up early or, or you got to kick a homeowner out too early. But they, you know, they do tend to like to come in the evenings. You have softer light. You can, you can kind of celebrate the outdoor spaces, you know, with the indoor spaces. And in many times, sure, we set up our doors and, you know, I, I had a situation on, on another vacant parcel in Jackson Hole that I knew it was fall time. I knew the elk would come out and start bugling in their fall rut. 
And so, you know, we had a big table set up with lion cheese and it was the wild kingdom right in front of you going on. And they couldn't believe it. I mean, they thought I teed these elk up somehow and pushed them out. You know, I'm like, no, this happens every night here. But had I brought them in the middle of the day, no, those elk are bedded down in the woods. So, you know, no matter what you're selling in this world, you must understand uh, everything about it and when it shows best. And it's no different with coastal properties. You, you don't show it during low tide. Right. Right. Tell me about, um, you know, becoming this hyper local expert. And obviously this was something that you were doing before you got your real estate license with the, um, you know, the publications you were putting out and the, and the videos, but tell me what, what was it that made you want to, you know, do that and how it has uh, impacted your real estate career? Yeah. I, well, you know, it's, I, I live in a place where I just have this innate interest. It, it's just, it's a lifelong learning experience here. And it started for me um, in college. I was a river guide in Grand Teton National Park. And it was it was not running whitewater. It was an interpretive trip. So anywhere from two to six hours, I had these folks on the raft with me. And they would drill me with questions. And you had to become a quick study. And that actually set a foundation of learning that truly has been lifelong. But it's it's something that I deliver with a genuine um, uh, excitement. Because when you live in a place like Jackson Hole, that's what happens. Yesterday morning, we had a couple elk in the backyard. And it's it, it's just every day, you know, you're amazed with what's around you. And I, I look for ways to share that. You know, so many of us that actually live here today did not grow up in Jackson Hole. My kids are native. I'm not. Um, and and it's uh, it's just the type of place you, you just, you want to share. And you have outlets to do it these days via social media, you know, uh, YouTube and the, and the other channels. And it has a great level of stickiness. And it's, it's interesting. I, I do look for how often my clients engage in it as a measure of, of kind of ROI. And, um, you know, they're, they're constantly, uh, engaging. In fact, we were, we were just sailing in the Bahamas over spring break and this guy comes up to me at the bar who I, who I had gone to prep school with, but had not seen in 30 years. And he goes, I knew it was you. I saw your wife with you. And I knew it was you, but that's, that's the resonance. That, that's how far reaching if you really invest in social media and find, find ways to share things that are interesting to others, not just tooting your own horn. Uh, it can yeah. be highly effective. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's important for people listening to this that, you know, maybe they don't live in a market, uh, like Jackson Hole or, you know, and have the, the Tetons there to, you know, kind of be the backdrop to, um, you know, the videos and the content that they're putting out. But I know from my experience in my career as a video journalist, there are stories in every community, small, big, it doesn't matter. There are great things to go out there and highlight inside your own community. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, you just got to dig a little deeper. It, it is a little harder, but maybe even just take a certain point of view that you, um, you go around and introduce your audience to locals. And, you know, you use that as a platform and people are always interested in other people's stories. And, you know, if there's a favorite breakfast shop, go meet that owner and introduce them via your platform because you know your clients are going to go in there. And if it's Bill or Susie that, you know, that you feature, they're going to see them and they're going to feel more connected. And they see, you know, the role of the realtor obviously extends beyond just selling a house. It's, it's more of a of a matchmaker to help ensure your client's success uh, into the community that they've moved into, or even that you know the the neighborhood on the hyper local basis, and that also speaks to potential buyers or even those looking to list a home. Who is the who is the right expert that uh, you know we want to to align with? That's going to give us value beyond just the transaction, and it's um you know the, yeah those deep community insights are are uh, very um, subliminally valuable to, to both sellers and, and buyers. Right. And, you know, I was about to uh, say that it's not just, it's not just the buyers you're attracting by doing that because even, you know, the locals that are putting their, their home up for sale, they see all that stuff and they know that you are that local expert and you're excited about the local community. They're going to be coming to you to list their home. Well, for sure. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's all about personal brand. And the more times they see your name attached to, to something around what you're doing, 
the greater the chance you will be top of mind when they need something, say in the case of listing the house. You know, it's, it's, it's a really interesting scenario of, of trying to figure out who's the next person to list a house. I mean, there's some natural things that happen in life, but, you know, unlike other forms of marketing, it's truly hard to qualify who's going to be listing next. So, you know, you're, you're left with the need to constantly promote yourself so that you're top of mind when that need to, you know, list the house comes up and they're like, who's the right person to do this? I guess, you know, moving on to, you know, working with buyers, especially the the types of buyers that you are, how important is it to really, um, to really get to know them and speak to them and find out what it is they're specifically looking for to, you know, enhance that lifestyle that they're looking to buy into? Sure. No, I, I think, you know, as with anyone in sales, it's, um, you've got to, you've got to, naturally in sales, we talk too much, but you've got to ask a lot of questions to come to understand uh, your client and what, what the needs are. I mean, kids in many ways help to start defining where they might live because of where schools are located. But if they're empty nesters, um, you know, I'm always trying to ask, you know, in a place like Jackson Hole, are you a skier? Because proximity to an amenity like that becomes very important. You know, I love to ask them, actually, what do you do in the morning? What's an ideal morning? Do you out of bed? You know, you got to go find a coffee shop or for sure you're going to go to a yoga class. Okay, well, then maybe living in, in this part of Jackson Hole would, would be more important to you. Um, you know, I all, often ask the question, uh, what does Christmas morning look like? How many people are in this living room? You know, that helps to drive the number of bedrooms and the size of the great room. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm very hesitant to just start pitching listings at first. I, I've got to get to know what their interest is. And keep in mind when they're buying from the outside, a lot of times they don't know. They don't know. And so it's this awkward dance of getting to know them ultimately showing listings, soliciting feedback to further inform myself as to which future listings might be a better fit and not wear them out in that process of where they stop opening emails when they get back home. Um, and that's, you know, that's a big issue we have with, with selling property in a destination like this. They're very focused when they're in town, but as soon as they leave town, if they haven't, you know, locked in on anything, uh, keeping their interest you know, it's, it's harder. They're not in the moment anymore. It's the same, you know, it's the same knowledge that a car salesman has. Don't let them off the lot. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we keep these kind of, kind of drip campaigns going. Um, but it's, uh, it's important when they're here on the ground to try and, and, you know, place them with the right set. Yeah. Do you get a lot of people that, you know, maybe come in for a vacation and absolutely fall in love with the place and, you know, want to meet somebody quickly to start looking around? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's interesting during ski season, you know, it's the busy hours are from kind of in the afternoons, two to six and you know, between when their legs get tired and, and before dinner. And it's a, uh, it's a natural reaction. You know, people spend two or three days here and Jackson Hole has become popular enough that they even come with this thought. Maybe their neighbor owns a property or a good friend. Um, and so they get off the plane thinking about it. And, you know, I have had people on, on listing presentations, the luggage is still in the Uber car. You know, they, they haven't even checked into the hotel. They're so focused on trying to find a place. And it's, uh, you know, you often think if who would buy a, you know, a home in a community they've never spent time in. But uh, I don't know. It's times are changing. People are much more willing to to make the sleep. Yeah, absolutely. I want to talk to you about um, you know handling the luxury properties because it's obviously it's very different than you know your standard residential home. I mean, even you, you talked about uh, that you know, the photograph that you took that helped you win the listing. That wasn't something that you had done a presentation and got the listing and then done all that work for something you already had. So. Uh, kind of walk me through a little bit about, you know, just how different some of these properties are to even just get to the point to where you have an opportunity to get the listing. You know, in a place like Jackson, Hole, we don't have, uh, have a lot of deal flow. In, in other words, there are not a lot of closings. So, you know, we are, we're living off a few big deals a year if you can win the business. 
And, you know, it's critical to put the homework in to try and, you know, inc increase the odds of, of earning that business. And I spent a lot of time doing spec videos. If I can get a seller to allow me um, to shoot in advance of the listing presentation, I become highly informed as to what their asset is and how to present it in that presentation. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're, you're making a pitch and you're kind of blind to, to what's happening and you're falling back on your, on just solely on your expertise of working in this space was, well, let's just say you've got three people pitching. They're all great realtors. What's that tipping point? What's the extra that someone did that, that really got a seller to, to buy in to this would be the right person. And it comes down to sure specking on. Uh, shooting videos and photos uh, as a way to inform yourself and show that you have some real skin in the game and a you know an earnest desire to to earn this business. Now, you know our luxury listings um, in a place like Jackson Hole, they have a lot going on. You know, they're fish in the stream, they're elk in the yard, uh, proximity to other amenities, and you you have to spend time understanding uh we you know, what does that wildlife migration look like across their property and it's um you know it's interesting i've had, had sellers come back after winning the business and and showing them the campaign i'm gonna launch for the listing and they're like where did you shoot that i'm like i'm on your property i don't even know um <laughs> but you're you know you're out there hiding in the bushes trying to get a picture of a great elk or a moose or um, you're fishing in the spring creek that runs through their property, but they don't quite understand fishing like you do. And, you know, your earlier question about just being a hyper local expert comes with truly loving and engaging the community that you live in so that you just, you know, you can, you can, you can show people how to have this lifestyle firsthand. And it's, uh, it really connects when you, when you walk a property and you point out where the fish are in their spring creek. You know, and they get their polarized glasses on and you're, you're showing them, they're like, oh my gosh, and you can catch those? Like, yes, you can catch those. And you're going to have coffee on this nook and you're going to watch the moose eat, uh, you know, your willow bush. Oh, you've got to be kidding. So I even go back to making sure I, I set up with sellers on my iPhone, a shared photo album. And I, I ask that they upload all the shots that they have that they think someone else would appreciate. Um, and that becomes very helpful because, you know, a lot of these shots you just can't walk up and get, especially as it relates to wildlife or, you know, once in a lifetime sunset. But more often than not, especially, you know, in today's world, the seller is taking a picture with their iPhone and it's, um, it can be very helpful because, you know, buyers, they believe in that type of organic content when shared, you know, not just the highly perfected, uh, you know, visuals that we that we produce and let's face it you can't even believe a photo of these days between right. a ai and post-production I and mean, honestly that sun's head probably didn't exist i mean yeah. it is it is insane what we can do um, and then again you know we're held to um you know a standard of, of making sure we do not misrepresent anything but i feel like that line is getting grayer and grayer in the way that you can evolve photos <laughs> Yeah, so. absolutely. And I really, I really like that idea of setting up the share album because you're right. And in a place like that, you know, and especially when you get that listing, because the seasons might be different and maybe the moose aren't, you know, necessarily migrating through that area or coming through that area when you have the opportunity to go out there and uh, take those pictures. But, you know, you might have, you know, they, I have to imagine the sellers have tons of pictures of they do yeah. well you know i always like to say to the seller michael i'm the least informed guy at the table when this relationship starts about your health i've never spent time here I've never shared cocktails on your back deck or watched a movie with you in the tea or you know the super bowl in your living room so i'm trying to get inside your head as to what you have loved about this property and the photos are a great way to create engagement with them so they feel a part of the process and of course i take those photos i might crop them differently i might you know help to to you know use post-production software to enhance them in the sense of contrast and, and what have you um but nonetheless it's uh you've got to remember that seller becomes your advocate for referral for the next listing so you know as much as we're focused on getting that house sold and finding that buyer 
let's not forget the way we manage the process with our sellers speaks volumes and their desire to refer us. And we are beholden to referrals in the industry. So, you know, I want to make sure they're, you know, they're as engaged and excited about and enjoying this process. I and mean, I actually had someone after staging the house, they built a spec house. They staged in it over Christmas, didn't have any furniture, talked them into staging it. They staged it. They came back. I got a full price offer, three weeks, no contingencies. This is a luxury ski and ski out property. The yeah. wife would not sell it. She loved it. <laughs> I earned my way right out of a great commission, you know, and it was super frustrating because, you know, if, if you're, if you invest a lot of time and energy in how to present things, which you must do when you're in sales. It makes a world of difference in the way buyers see it. Yeah. Yeah. And I really, I, I totally agree with, you know, if you, uh, if you're engaging those sellers throughout the entire process and making them a part of your selling process, uh, you know, you're definitely setting yourself up for those referrals because, you know, they were excited to be part of that entire, that journey with you. Oh, for sure. I, I think, you know, for all of us in the industry, if we think about hiring someone to represent our home to sell it, you know, what would we do to help shape, you know, the outcome that we desire? But I, I can speak, you know, from firsthand experience, as I'm sure many of your those in your audience can. Sellers sometimes think we, we're just the experts. We know everything. Let me get out of the way so you can do what you're doing. And sure, that's true with helping with negotiations, setting up contracts you know, defining where these things are going to be marketed. But when it comes to truly understanding the product that you're selling and how to present it and when to present it and, you know, what spaces in the home are the, are the best to showcase, you know, it's the seller that answers that. And if you don't engage them, you're working blindly. It takes you a lot longer to get through that learning curve of how to present and showcase a listing. And you're going to misfire for the first couple of showings till you figure it out. And, you know, also keep in mind that if you don't spend a lot of time on the property before you start the showings, you're just not informed. I am fortunate because the photography and the video work has me there. Um, I mean, I spent 20 hours on this spec pitch on the property. You know, I know where every light switch is. I went and unclogged their drain, their, their gutters so that it would stop making part of the driveway wet. So you crawl through these properties, uh, helping, uh, you know, helping them look the best they can and you you know and that process is just invaluable in the way it informs me and you know that makes a huge difference when you go to list it and show it people people can tell if you understand the product yeah absolutely and i think that's a really valuable lesson um for agents for any any property any you know any price point um if you put in that amount of effort you know you are going to be the person that they trust and refer out for life. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and it's, it's, um, so much of the industry is rallied around having teams, you know, and inherently I think the challenge with teams is there's one person on the team that knows that listing. Well, they had the relationship that warmed the business, but they're not able to make a showing, you know, they pass it to a colleague to go and, and show the listing. And when you bring a buyer and you're sitting there and you're listening to their spiel, it's just obvious as to as to their knowledge, and it really makes an impact on you know the buyers and the buyer. And you keep telling a buyer, "Let me get back to you. Let me get back to you. Let me get back to you." You know, there's a point in which the buyers are like, "Well, what are we doing here? You know, bring the right person for this listing uh, presentation. I, you're wasting my time too." And it's um, you know, you leave all these open ended questions when someone walks out the door. So I I always believe that really. Uh, you know, these listings that I work on in particular, I, I choose not to work in a team environment because, you know, I, I'm the only one with this deep seated knowledge about the house and I can convey yeah. it best. And I, I owe this duty to my seller to do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I think, you know, those buyers, um, they also, I think they can pick up on the enthusiasm that you have for your listings as well. And it helps get them excited about, you know, possibly, you know, making a, a, a life in this home for oh, apps. I mean, 100%, you know, if you show up and you can, you can speak with a genuine interest and excitement about how a property lives, not only within the four walls and under the roof, but 
you know, the coffee shops, the running trails and all the other amenities and how maybe you can speak from personal experience of enjoying those amenities, you know, all of a sudden, you know, they're feeding off your energy. Um, and it, it astounds me when I show up to listing uh, presentations and I, I mean, the, the person presenting the house is just dead weight, dead weight. And I'm like, how did the seller end up with this age? And, you know, in this day and age, I'm like, I wonder if they're looking at their, their webcam and watching the behavior of their agent during a presentation. Because <laughs> yeah. you never know where cameras are these days. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Before I let you go, I do have to ask you about uh, one in particular uh, listing of yours, this 233 acre ranch. Tell me about that and, you know, what that, what all went into that. Sure. Um, you know, that, that was a project that I have loved. It was featured in the Wall Street Journal as with other outlets. Millions and millions of eyeballs have seen it. Uh, international um, interest uh, came in and uh, many people came by private jet to see it. Now, you know, the, the irony in it, Michael, is um, it's the type of place that you have neighbors surrounding you in the backyard. But when you turn and look towards the Tetons, you don't see anything. And two thirds of the property was basically in the river plain. So in other words, it couldn't be developed. It's harder to move around. You couldn't really appreciate it unless you found the way to get buyers out there. And so, um, you know, I realized and, and walking every inch of this parcel in order to realize the value in the property at some 35 million as a list price, I had to move them around the 233 acres and believe it or not, I had to give them bear mace because it was grizzly bear season. <laughs> so the elk calves were, were out, you know, it's late spring, early summer and the grizzly bears prey on it. And you ought to see the look in their eyes when they hand them bear mace. And I go, well, what's this for? Stay close to me. Um, but you need to be able to, you know, to use this yourself. So, um, <laughs> it was, uh, I, I had a drift boat set up to get them across the channels. And they loved it. It was, you know, I didn't say we were going on a listing tour. Rather, what I said was we're going on a, on a nature walk. And we're going to appreciate this property from end to end. And, you know, all too often as agents, we always start a presentation at the house. But let's face it, if the house is not appealing to he or she that have come, then, you know, it's, it's, they don't care about the setting. And in a place like Jackson Hole, you're mostly buying land. You can always change the improvement. So I knew that we needed to tour the property, have them fall in love with the setting, then bring them back to the house. And you know what? If they loved the property, they wouldn't let the house get in the way of the deal. And um, I I sold this property almost to the first uh, party that showed up. Um, we walked the property. Uh, he, he flew back in, walked it again a second time. We sat on a bench uh, along the river. And uh, he said to me, do you think I should buy this? And, you know, it, it wasn't a question of whether or not I was going to sell the property. It had more leads than I could ever imagine. But I felt his energy and appreciation for the property because he put the time and effort to walk it, to get into the drift boat, you know, to float the channels. And he bought it. He bought it. And the next visit, I was sitting there with his son teaching him how to fly fish to the, you know, to the trout right there on his property. But, um, and sending him photos of the elk herd that would come out every night uh, and grace the front yard. And it was, uh, that, that was, that was a special, special opportunity. Um, taking it even further and then I'll, I'll stop talking, uh, doing the research, I realized historically it was called the Jackson Hole Ranch and it, it, you know, truly earned, I mean, owned, owned the, the ability to call itself that. And so I presented it that way. Um, but that took time, you know, you got to go in and study these deeds and look at the chain of ownership and, um, even had a local attorney here whose family owned it, uh, some 30, 40 years ago, finding an original brochure for when it was a guest ranch. And that's what it was called, the Jackson Hole Ranch. So, um, community engagement, you know, was, was most helpful. Um, and, uh, boy, I wish I had 10 of those properties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Absolutely. Well, I, you know, before, before I let you go, I just have to say, you know, I, I think, your enthusiasm for Jackson Hole definitely comes through in just this short amount of time that we've, you know, that we've talked. And I think that is something that um, anybody listening to this, if you, you know, truly find enjoyment in the market that you serve, it, it's going to come across in the way you present it to your buyers. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're looking for is being local experts. 
And I feel like if you can't bring that to the table, it's truly a disservice to those you're representing um, because they don't understand, you know, the location, location, location component. Um, and and they're just focused on the house. Let's face it, we're always going to evolve a house when we buy a house. We're going to make it ours. Um, so, I, you know, I don't get so tied up on the house as much as I, as I really focus on location being one of the strong attributes. Yeah, absolutely. For anybody that's listening to this that wants to uh, to check out some of this content and the, the the you know the stuff that you've put out over the years, where can they find that? Uh, you know, I, I welcome them to come to my wipe uh, my website. That's live l i v e water uh, jackson hole dot com. Um, you can connect to my social channel, which is obviously most active, and uh, would love to love to engage with you. Absolutely. Well, I really, really do appreciate you taking the time this morning to talk with us. Well, Michael, thank you. It's a great pleasure to be on the show. And you guys do tremendous work adding a lot of value to the industry for all of us. I want to thank Latham for joining us today and love how he focuses on so much more than the physical house when marketing his properties and can easily see why he's so sought after in his market. Remember to check out his website at livewaterjacksonhold.com. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.